how did some of the peace get started? It was initially by Pastor Redeke, uh proposing it to the Rocky Mountain District. And based upon that, uh, they moved forward and created a core group uh, of which we were part of that core group. And given it to Pastor Robbie, he said, uh, we'd like to start a church over north of Gethsemane, north of 120th. Could you do some survey work for us and see what membership the Brighton Church, Zion Brighton, and uh, the Risen Savior and Gethsemane have in those areas that the church would be serving. So Miriam and I proceeded to get information and turned it into him. And he suggested maybe we have a meeting with our group that we lived up this way and also with a few others that were interested in coming. And he said, don't you have a Thursday night Bible study? And we said, yeah, there's five of us that we meet on Thursday nights. And he said, well, that's a good way to get a group started. So can we get them together and uh, talk about it? So we did and invited a few other people that were members of Gethsemane and Zion Brighton. And they came, we had a meeting and it was decided that they wanted to build a church. Why was Seminary Peace started? They saw a need in the North area for another Lutheran church. That was. Uh, Seminary Peace got started, I'm reasonably sure, because of the growth in the North area, up in this area. There was Gethsemane in Northland, and that was a large church, but they felt that uh, with the growth in the North area, they should start a, a mission church up here. Well, for Kevin and I, we were very young the first few years here, but it was kind of our first experience of going to church very regularly. Um, it became very, I kind of a home for me. Um, it was in the school that I went to elementary school, so it was kind of like coming home, and, and it was, for me, it was kind of the first real experience I had with church that I enjoyed, so. Going out and canvassing the various subdivisions, talking to people, um, just telling them that uh, a new Lutheran church was being started in the neighborhood and they were invited to come. Our first service was the first Sunday in October of 1985. And uh, we uh, had a Sunday school and um, probably 16, 18 children and Del Strom and Alice Smith Steve Walker, um, Linda Wigan, and myself were the Sunday school teachers. We had great VBSs in the summer. Uh, we would have nearly 100 kids in the um, gymnasium at Tarver Elementary. And uh, Dell and I were talking about it just the other day, and she said, oh, it was so noisy in there. And that's true, you can imagine 100 kids, even though we tried to keep them under control. Uh, that was fun, you know. It was um, just fun to see the joy that we all had in working together. We were in Tarver Elementary. That's where our church was. and. Uh, it, we had a retired pastor for a couple years, and then we went to a seminary student we called. That was our first pastor, Pastor Ashenbrenner. Pastor Kuiper was the retired gentleman. Uh, it was challenging, but exciting at the same time. It, uh, it was a lot of fun to start something like that. I'm running by this building, and I, I don't necessarily know how to explain it well. It, it almost felt like the building called me. And so I, after staring there for a moment and just kind of almost disbelief, I just went off with my run and said, okay, if the good Lord's trying to tell me something, I better go listen to what it was. And so I came that Sunday, and I have been coming ever since. I joined Summit of Peace because I was chasing a girl. <laughs> I joined Summit of Peace because 
we were at a fork in the road in our life and um, we had just recently um, had gone through a severe auto accident and um, we were looking to, to uh, grow in our faith and get back into church and with the help of my mom she found this place and introduced us and because of her we are here today. Well, we joined Summit of Peace. Uh, we were looking for, for a uh, new church home. We had some friends that were going here at Summit, and so they told us, to, why don't you come visit? And so we did and stayed. We came when Pastor Al's house was still here, and he and I hooked up right away because uh, he had the same favorite Bible passage as mine from Psalms. And uh, so it, it was kind of a quick connection, and we, we fell at home here. Growing up, um, we would always come here for Easter and have the little Easter egg hunts with all our friends and have the eggs hidden all around the church and we'd like go and find all the chocolate and then open it together and it was super fun and then as we got older we'd go and hide the Easter eggs and it was just... My favorite memory of Summit of Peace um, were the, are the cantatas that we did. The Easter cantata and the uh, Christmas cantatas. I just loved them. I loved performing them and the music program. Miles' baptism. Um, it was the first time other than confirmation I was really, you know, involved in anything and up on the altar and I was his godfather so it was a really important service to me. So He's still on. I am his godfather, yeah. I'm sorry. My favorite memory of Summit of Peace is when we get to do all of the youth activities with our good friends and we make new friends. When the church was being built, it was built, the building was here, and I brought my, my old, old, old John Deere tractor to the yard here so that we could prep the land around it to put the grass in and get it ready for, you know, landscaping. And Roland Pretzer drove my tractor and disc probably a good week, solid week, prepping the dirt. It was fun to watch him. He was like a kid in a candy store. He was having a blast. For me, it would be working on the expansion of this building. It was just a joy to be in on, on some of the planning and, and working, working on the building to make it the beautiful facility we have today. Probably our son's confirmation and watching him go through that process, that was an awesome memory. Um, yeah, confirmation and uh, way back in the day I helped uh, with the youth group and we did uh, Relay for Life and Cookie Bakes for fundraising and all that. I love that. I love working with the youth. There's some great campouts too. Oh yes, the campouts are always fun. I think the camping trips are the we best do, memory we have. Yeah. Seniors, breakfast, lunch, dinner, Bible study. I think the one that stands out to me and is when Pastor Jacoby was put in as our head pastor. And his, the ceremony, I had never been to one of any pastor being put into another church. And I was very just, it was kind of breathtaking to witness uh, what they go through in the ceremony. It was very, it was very nice. Another one of my favorite memories has been our life group. Not really memory as much as experience because um, it's really helped me feel like grounded in the church, not just like coming on Sundays, but like a member of a community and a culture. So that's been really wonderful. My favorite memory is when, uh, is when pastor, is when both, both pastors, they called us up for the first time for children's message. Well, my fondest memories are when my children got married here and also the grandchildren were baptized here. I think that's some of my best memories. I'll second that. <laughs> I'll have to agree. Um, weddings, baptisms, catechism, confirmation, um, all those highlights were very memorable. My favorite memory was all of the Easter Sundays. All of them? All of them? Not just one? Yes. I love all of them. <laughs> my favorite memory is when we got to become a member of the church. You remember that? No. <laughs> uh, 
I, I've had so many good memories here. Probably one of my favorites was uh, Mad Scientist Roberts at <laughs> VBS uh, in 2015, where I got to bring out a, uh, a uh, leaf blower and blow toilet rolls paper just <laughs> shooting off into and just they were delighted by it and it was just so crazy and um, that's just an example of, of the fun everyone has around here so my favorite memory of some of the pieces that helped with the youth group hang out with the kids and everyone and they're all really nice my favorite memory is still in the making because we are still growing For me, it's just that it's our family church. My kids were baptized here, and I was married here, and so it's mine. One of the things for me is the building. And you might say, well, that's kind of a dumb answer. But if you look at it, it has given us the capability to do much more mission work than when we only had Tarver as a place to meet. We could not have Lenten services, we could not have Advent services, uh, Christmas Eve services, you know, Easter was basically one service, and all the uh, ways that we can share and use this, I think, has expanded our mission to a lot more people than just that time when we could had hour, hour and a half, or two hours, whatever it was, over at Tarver Elementary. What I love about some of the pieces is that, that when you're, how we do so many like fun activities like plays, and so we actually have something for the kids to enjoy, and actually, and the adults can enjoy some stuff, and that we, that, um, we're, that our family's always together. The one thing I love Summit of Peace is everybody accept everybody. No matter what you are, if everybody's open heart, like like a family, like really family to me. Yeah, it's um very close, uh, at different junctures in your life, um, people tend to step up uh, in different directions and and uh, fill those voids um, with some type of knowledge or ex wisdom that they've had through their their uh, good times or bad times, hardships or, and, and I think that's um, very uh, overwhelming at times in a good way. I wanna see the food. <laughs> the pastors both preach from the Bible. They even bring it up forward because they don't stand behind the pulpit. They're not stuck to it. They, they move around in, in the in the altar area and they, they preach from the Bible and that's that's what we're here for. My favorite part of Summit of Peace is how involved people get, especially when it's a, a ministry that needs their help and reaches the community like Food for Hope or um, Sweet Dream in a Bag or any of our events that we, we ask people to contribute or backpack drive, those sorts of things. I always love how we get such a great uh, turnout and response from everybody. I think the um, the willingness of of the people here to embrace the changes that we've been trying to um, you know trying to get get going and just moving forward and just the the support that I feel like you know anybody who who has an idea to help other people they'll be supported here. I think the like, the best part of Summit of Peace is the people and how great like a community we have of everyone so friendly and. It has like a huge sense of like family. It's a very welcoming congregation. Welcomed, very warmly welcomed here. The people here, we were we were welcomed and it was very friendly and it was warm. We love the people. The people, by far, the people. People. So I like the people here. People. The people. I like the people and the friendship. The friendship. The friendship. Warm and friendly. How friendly and welcoming everyone was. And friendly. I love that we feel like a big family. Family. It's like a big family. Family. The sense of family that comes along with uh, being a member. It's one big happy family. <laughs> How has God blessed Summit of Peace over the years? Oh, I can't count the, the ways. 
so many ways. Look at, look at where it is now, and I have to look back when we started, and there was just blessing upon blessing. So I, I would say many, many blessings. One thing that it's blessed the church, God has blessed the church in the growth in being able to expand and build a new sanctuary and just the amount of members that we have added to our church in the area. I also believe the talent that has come through Summit of Peace. I've seen a lot of changes with the musical talent from the kids kids group, kids choir, to the bell choir, the adult bell choir, and now the kids bell choir as well has been phenomenal to watch. Well, I, I'd like to uh, continue, like to see it continue to grow, but also be a, a strong, vibrant church. Well, I'd like to see it grow and be able to add on to the building on the other side. Obviously, um, growth to have more people uh, come and grow and share in the faith uh, here. It would be nice to see uh, possibly even uh, to a point where we, we get into maybe even a child care or educational wing um, to, to bring in uh, more people. And I'm going to say wherever the Lord leads us. And uh, I think he has more knowledge of what we need and where we need to be. I am a strong believer in thy will be done, not my will be done. I would love to see it grow into um, being able to add a school, to have a private charter school for, uh, for students to attend. I'd like to see some of the piece as it is, but growing. I wouldn't like to lose what we have. It would also be to see some of the piece not just grow in size, but grow in depth to not just get to know more of the people that are here already, that everybody's close, but maybe get closer. I hope that, uh, you know, in 10 years, Summit of Peace continues to grow with our ministries. What I think is great, you know, even from when we were here, how much more involved we are with the community, which is, I think, very exciting. So with, you know, the new gardens that went in, um, the Food for Hope program that's going on, um, you know, the sweet dream in a bag. I think there's so many things for us to get involved with, which is great and, you know, whatever, um, you know, gets you excited and, and, you know, happy to serve others and serve your community. We're, we're providing a, a large option or large variety right now. And so I hope to see that continue and hopefully grow to get people excited to serve. I'd like to see us reaching out to the younger generation. Um, I think that they're very important and that's what we need to concentrate on. I'd still like to see it as a big family, but just growing. I'd like to see a lot of new people and I'd like to see something, I feel like I want to go more as kind of a mix of traditional and more modern, especially as, you know, all this new technology and more um, new music comes out. I think that we should really focus on intertwining that with our traditional services and hymns. In 10 years, I would like to see us continue to grow. I would like to see us um, adapt to the changing pressures on on the church in the country and find a way to reach more people, the youth, the high school next door, and continue to do what we've always done and, and that's be welcoming and a great place to go. And I would agree with that. I, I would say that, you know, all the strides that we're making are wonderful and that I'd like to see them continue, especially with the youth and the life groups and just so many great things that Some of the Peace is doing. I think in 10 years, I would like to see Some of the Peace uh, honestly grow, grow larger by getting smaller, by uh, connecting um, to the people out in the communities or in our networks uh, and just intentionally uh, bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to them, loving them, uh, being Jesus for them. 
Um, and I think uh, we're getting a lot of pieces in place to do that. And I pray that the Lord is, is leading us to do that, honestly. In 10 years, I'd like to see Summit of Peace be a um, thriving church that uh, disciples its members to be um, not only knowledgeable about their faith, but also living it out in their uh, lives and their neighborhoods. And um, prayerfully, will be a church that um, has a big impact in our community. One that if we weren't there, the people of Thornton would um, would miss us. Um, hopefully, we'll continue in our efforts to um, not only serve the community but share the gospel throughout the world. And maybe we'll even have planted a church or two. Okay, that's it. Cut. Um, is any of it usable? Yes. Did we, were we lame? You were. You were totally lame.